No. I'll, put, I'll put low whatever discipline you're teaching us how to do, right? Let me get that one. They don't know what they're doing. To know a PE is. Okay, so what are other outcomes we want? And why do we want those outcomes? So they can get to What's the next? Jobs, could be whatever it is. Skills. Yeah. Okay. Skills, knowledge Life. in the workforce. Or even just the next topic. So what are some of the needs in the workforce? What are they asking for? Well, I don't like Never the work workforce. Problem solved. You don't like the work workforce? Yeah, it's pretty bad. It could be. It is. Mm -hmm. On the. Uh, but it could be the next step. Their their life no. beyond you. <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> okay. I, I prefer career. Career. That's true. Because uh, workforce has a connotation of a, a lower level, go work in a factory. Um, no. Oh, yes, interesting. Uh, no, but you know what? So guess what? This is an interesting thing. The highest number of jobs in Colorado are post-secondary education, a little bit of post-secondary edu education, certificate or associate's degree. That's the highest need for STEM workers right now. Isn't that interesting? So not all kids need a four-year degree, right? Are we telling them that? No. But guess what? So if, whether we say four workers, I know. We want them to finish, right? Yes. Okay, so what about the ones that don't finish? Do they know they have an option? Right? Yeah, McDonald's. McDonald's? Not necessarily. They can have a really good career, a STEM career in makes. I was mentioning single moms earlier. Um, so the Women's Foundation Caller is working on this. Um, but actually, for single moms, STEM careers are one of the best ways to reach economic self-sufficiency because they can make over $50,000 with not a four-year degree, with lower than a four-year degree. Okay, so that space between out of high school, but you need some training, and associate's degree. That space, okay? just And those are good conversations to have in terms of opportunities that maybe for whatever reason life happened to a student, you say, you know what, why don't we take it in phases? Why don't you get to this point, let's get that done, and, and how are you connecting with the community colleges to see if there's some type of um, concurrent, you know, type of credit opportunity for students who life happens to them, right? Do we want them to just not have anything? Okay, so that's a, so, but what are those? What are the, the match the needs? This, what are the skills that employers are looking for? Or that communication. communication. Okay, what else? Responsibility. Okay. Show up on time. Professional. Fail, fail. Professional. Critical thinking. Troubleshooting. Showing up. Okay. Problem solving. Ethics. Malleability. Oh, I love it. Entrepreneurship. All right. I'm going to put a, I'm not going to capture everything, but we, I think we have a common shared understanding. Are your students learning this in your classes? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Are they aligning with how you plan and what you teach? Yeah? All right. So how do you decide what to teach? Is it just driven by what they're going to need in the workforce? Or your, your what did you say, the 10,000-year math? <laughs> 5,000 year old stuff. Okay? So nothing bad, right? In terms of, well, yeah, that's things that were actually studied at that time. Do you decide, do you teach all of that? How do you decide which, what's foundational and what's ne necessary for the next step? Can some of you share? So when you say teach, do you refer that explicitly we teach them, okay, about this one, or we will give them the opportunity to learn those things? Like, for example, how do you teach? Responsibility, okay, so I get you a bad grade if you don't turn this thing on time. That's a good but, point. But that's not teaching them, that's forcing them to do something. <laughs> there's consequences, there's consequences, right, directly. Um, yeah, it's really hard to grade that up here. It's really difficult to grade. So many of us actually don't do a very good job at it because what we test is not that, right? But that's what employers are saying they want. Kind of an interesting... An interesting split. We say that, we say we want students to be able to do that, but rarely do we actually, some you know, teachers 
or some professors might focus on communi communication and ability to present as part of their grade, but very few actually do. Not to mention, you're not going to give a grade for being on time necessarily, right? Mm -hmm. But how do you still teach these skills in a way that makes it real to the students that they need this when they're out, right? So it's kind of a balance between, I call it content that you have. You all think can think of content, and I'm going to have you listening in a little bit. You can think of skills, but then ask yourself, if I think skills are important, what space am I providing for students to show me that they, they got this, you know, in multiple, in multiple ways, not just one time. And then this last, you know, essential, or not essential, um, existential question, why do you teach? What do you, what do you find rewarding or... What is it that, do you like it or do you not like it? It's okay if you say no, I'll let you take it. Mine were grading the final exam. Yeah, it's true. You're right, that's a good point. Oh, but it's such a good point. Think about that final exam and why are you grading so much? <laughs> um, in terms of, when, when, when it's all said and done, does this final exam tell you what you just said you valued and your students walking away with? I had a, a teacher once say to me, I have to go and grade quizzes. And I said, well, what did you give a quiz on? She said, oh, it's a book, you know, and I, I, they had 15 questions. And I said, well, how is that quiz going to help you inform your next step? She goes, oh, it doesn't. I just give it right back to them. So think about that in terms of assessment. You know, when you grade something, what happens afterwards? Is it just like, oh, too bad, boom, tosses, and there's that come in? Or do you help? Is there something that can help inform your instruction in terms of why did you assess that? Why did you just spend 15 hours reading all these papers? Why did that matter? Right? Okay. So, um, the last thing we're going to do on this is... There was one more. Okay. I think we'll turn around to this side and we're going to go through... And I know some of these started already, but I'll explain what all of them are. Okay, so this is a planning tool, and I know that some of you have your own distinct way. So if you say, I actually start with student outcomes, then you would actually start this graphic organizer down here. And actually, it's on the slide. I don't know why I'm using this. Okay. Um, so if you say, I actually start here. I want them to know this, 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 and that, right? Now, you can do this for an entire semester, but it's kind of a little small space. But that, more than anything, at least plan something. I'm hoping you know, that, you know, at least you have a big picture. Um, Bruce mentioned telling a story. And this is kind of interesting, because if you ask a student, uh-oh, time for the student. Where is she at? Was it she or? She ran. Oh, okay. She ran. She's right there. That's how she's going. Okay, no pressure. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay. What what um level are you? I'm a senior. Okay, senior. Okay, freshman. Think back to freshman year. Uh, think back to one of your introductory courses. Okay. All right. Um, what was the most memorable experience? <laughs> I'll come right. <laughs> okay. um, I just think my professor helped me through it because I didn't get it. I what was it? What intro to stats. Okay, intro to stats. So, so what did that professor do? She really worked with me. I went into her office hours. She also had like a little math club type of thing. And I used to go in there, get tutoring for it. So, on each test. So, what is that? So long ago. It's kind of numbers. Right? But also. So long ago. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Just, no, I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, it's okay. But that's, that's it. You ask a four year, you know, a student in the fourth year, and they're not going to remember. Thank you. Okay, if you ask a good number of students, you know, what was the most memorable moment? Why did you have to do this?
this course. It's like, well, I have to pass the class for my next step. You know, they could never make that deeper connection many times. And I think that sometimes it takes, you know, a PhD to make that deeper connection. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, why not? If you could if you could think back, you know, about the outcome idea, if you could see your students, freshman students, ten years down the road, twenty years down the road, and they say, you know, I really enjoyed how how we learned about biodiversity, and I, I really understand how important it is in terms of you know, the area I live in and how it has an impact. And they start telling you all this stuff, or I really understand how you can actually, how math and physics are so interrelated, and I can see the concepts and how, how they actually grid. You know, some, a different story is what I'm after, right? And not just say, you know, I, honestly, I took that class and I have no idea. But I know the tests were hard, and I know I have to memorize about 5,000 words. Is that really what we want? Think about the critical thinking piece that employers are looking for. Is that what they care for, right? And I know that that's like really pushing a system that is so ingrained, and we do this class, we do that class, we do that class. I know that that's a system that we're working you know, within. But the reality is, and we talk about you know, student inspiration, right? What is it that gets students learn, learning and loving to learn? Because ultimately, when we want decision makers, when we want workers or any person who pursues any career to be passionate about what they do and why they do it, most students can't tell you what that is. So that's something to think about. I kind of just like to do that because it really does trigger a, why do I teach this? Does it matter? Right? And this is the hard part. You're going to have to think about that. You have to give me, why should I care about linear equations? Why should I care about, what was it the one you said, pH? Why should I care? And believe me, right now that I'm doing my garden, I kind of have to do my garden. And I've never been so interested in actually figuring out the nitrogen cycle, you know, even though it was a question on my PhD comp exam, you know? I mean, it's really one of those things where I went through the entire system, but now it's real to me, now that I'm actually converting my entire backyard into a food forest. It, I see it, it makes sense to me now. And it took that long, right? Um, so what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna go through each of the sections, and then I actually want you to take the time to either think of one class, and I, by that I mean, you know, your, your area, it could be algebra, what, college algebra, it could be whatever, one class, and it could be your first week, perhaps, of, of that class, you know, or it could be, you know, it could be whatever you want in terms of where you're at in your, in your process, because you might say, hmm, I actually see a couple of these happening. I might have, you know, a story to tell. Okay, so by the end, and it's almost like this is the end. I want I want students to be able to do a project to explain how you know linear equations relate to these phenomena in life, right? So if that's their final project or their assessment, how are you going to work backwards so they can actually get everything they need, all the skills, all the content along the way? So you get the point. It's a story, and it might be your entire semester. So you might have many of these, and you're going to tell a story. And if you want students to be able to walk away from your course with all these different things, where are they learning it throughout you, the experience with you in, in either that semester course or that one year long course, depending on what you're teaching. So let's go through each of these. What's a concept? <laughs> wow, that was like a deer in the head. <laughs> What concepts do you teach? Variable. Variable? Do you teach design? Yeah. You used to? That's a concept. Modeling and design. Modern design is a concept. Modeling. Modeling and design. Modeling and design. The models that you mathematical models and all the ones that you just go out with clothes. And yes! <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I mentioned one, biodiversity is a concept in biology. Uh, the idea of a system is a concept, right? It could be different systems. Um, what other concepts do you teach? Probability distribution. 
Yes. <laughs> Distribution of con probability of type of. Uh -huh. Energy conversion. Energy. Energy conversion, right? Energy is a huge concept. In all, in, I would say the majority of the disciplines in here, energy is big. Can students tell you how energy, how to explain energy within the different disciplines and different contexts? <laughs> they probably have a hard time. Even though they can do it, they can probably you know, figure it out. But explaining it is something they might have uh, um, difficulty doing. So you can list your concepts if you're looking at you know, whatever, you, in your frame of mind, whatever area you want to focus in. You can list your concepts. However, if you want to start here, I want students to walk away with this, 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 and that. That might help you work backwards, OK? So that's something to think about. How will you know that they got it? Is it going to be a project, your typical test? What kind of questions are you going to give in that test? Is it just going to be the same old, same old multiple choice? Or how will that tell you that students are showing you? And if you say, I really value this the idea of 21st century collaboration and 21st century skills, are you, it doesn't have to be a formal test, but are you along the way gauging if students are getting that? Are you doing it by interactions? Are you doing it by visual inspections? Do you have a, you know, something, do you have a TA that can help me perhaps? Or can you assign a TA or something like that to help you to see things that maybe you weren't paying attention to before, right? Critical skills. Can students keep a notebook? Can students, you know, what is the skill? So, and make sure it's a verb. So, for example, um, you know, um, create a scientific notebook. That would be a critical skill. You know, but use an action verb. You want the, the, them to do it. Okay. Um, so it has to be a verb. Critical content. You guys are good at this. We overlook mm -hmm. students with content, right? We're really questioning, well, what is, is it essential? <coughs> Why are we teaching, you know, a thousand words? Critical content would be types of energy, right? If you're talking about energy, you, students need to be able to describe what the different types are. Transformation, right? Critical content. If you, if you feel there's an overload here, start questioning yourself. And some of these things might actually be concepts. So energy would actually be the idea of what is energy would actually fall under there. But it's also, these two kind of go together. Now, this one is kind of a hard one. And you might leave it till the end. After all is said and done, if we put a student here four years from now, 10 years from now, and 20 years from now, <coughs> why should they care about being in your class? Why should they care about learning with you, right? Because that, changing that gives them, especially students who are historically underrepresented in STEM careers, it gives them a sense of purpose. This matters in my life. Of course, it's a good strategy for all students, but it's almost essential, especially when they don't know what the connections are, for you to help them make those connections. So you can leave this one last. I will let you, but just don't forget it, okay? Because that is one of the most important things you can do. Key activities. Um, if I see a lecture only here, <laughs> I will run, okay? Make sure you think about what are some of the things that you can do to vary your instruction? Are they doing small group work? Are you, when we're talking about the expectation that we just know, well, students are supposed to know how to work in groups. That's a big, big assumption, you know? So sometimes that might be the, what are some good strategies for, you know, teamwork? And just spending five minutes, and one of, uh, one of the things that I found um, with uh, middle school students, actually, that works really well with any student, is to build on others' idea. Instead of saying, oh, no, no, but I have a better idea, is to say, you know, for example, uh, say, um, Sandra, you came up with something. And then I said, oh, I really like what Sandra said. And I think we could add this, this, and that. Or I really can be specific about what it, what it was that I liked about her idea. <clears throat> Things I, so it might be teaching students how to work in groups or, or setting norms for working in groups. That would be better, OK? Because then if you set it early on, then they will know, especially if they're going to work long term with those groups, how to do it. It might be, um, we talked about the assumption that they're supposed to know this, this, and that before our class, but we never actually know if they know that. What could you do to get that information out of students? You don't want to give them a test day one, right? But can you? You do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could, or you could actually do different um, type of learning spaces where they're, they, it's an icebreaker because they get to know each other. But there, you can also start listening to their ideas. Well, a really good one that I like, uh, that because biology is my area, is I take 
big concept that I want students to know by the end. And I actually have them um, create statements linking the concepts together. And sometimes they're like, we have no idea. Then that tells me that they really lack in their biology you know, uh, content knowledge. So that's something that, just thinking differently about it and utilizing your first day in a different way to so where students get to know each other, they become you know, this idea of friendly, and you get to know what they know. Um, key resources. What do you have? Is it just your textbook? And that's it? What if students can't access that textbook? So access is this. This is how are students getting the information, okay? And the, that, and the reason why I bring, I taught conservation biology a while back, and I had a student come to my office mid-year, or mid-semester rather, and say, I don't have a textbook. And then, uh, you know, there's a part of me that can say, tough luck, Cookie, you should have gone in, right? <laughs> there's that part. What are some other options to not respond that way that you can think of? Where can, I, where, where can that student find copies? Put it on reserve. Put it on reserve, you know? So here, you might put that, you know? Put on reserve. Uh-huh. They can share with a friend, right? This is you being thoughtful about what to say to that student without putting them... Like, really? You don't have a textbook? You know, that's, that's not an appropriate answer. Put on reserve. How about, why do you have textbooks? Questioning that. Do you need textbooks? Right? I mean, think about it. Times are changing. Times are changing, but information doesn't necessarily change. So why do we keep having students buy really expensive textbooks that perhaps, some of them, don't change very much. Or perhaps some are changing so fast that textbooks can't even keep up, right? Like history. So that's something to think about. There are ebooks now where you can create your own textbook, okay? And you can say, based on my story, I want students to be able to access this, this information or the concept. These are the big concepts that I want them to access. And then you create your own textbook based on that. You can do that on Google, on Google Docs too. And actually provide the own information yourself for students, you know. So that's, think about difference in terms of access and making sure, sure all students have access. Now, um, language. You're not gonna provide Spanish textbooks, right? But there are tools to actually at least help students. Like Google Translate, for example, you can actually take a picture of a paragraph, and if you move your phone, or it doesn't take a picture, you just move your phone, and it puts it in Spanish. And it's enough to actually get the idea and the concept, concepts to actually be able to read it in English where it helps. So all those different strategies students might not be aware of, this is, you want students to access the information that you are providing, how will it get done if the typical way perhaps is not reaching your students right now, okay? Expression is, how will students tell you that they know what they know. So, so say you give a typical 90-minute exam or something like that, and you're like, yeah, 70% um, of, the, of the class failed that. Does anybody have that high failure rate? Sometimes. All the time. All the time. So, sorry to bring it to you, but it's not working, right? <laughs> That's not working. What are other ways that they can express what they know that does not mean a 90-minute exam. What if they haven't learned anything? Then you better go back and start here. But what if it's you know? not us? Okay, so let, let's <laughs> don't take it personal. I'll, let me go back. Don't take it personal because they, it's this sense of like, well, it's their fault, right? Ultimately, even if it is, you know, there's a sense, there's a part of me that going back to them understanding why it's important in their lives creates that sense of, why should I care about this, you know? Because ultimately, I don't think most students say, yeah, I'm gonna spend, you know, $50,000 on my education, and yeah, some students have scholarships, but ultimately, it's because they wanna be somebody in life. Nobody, nobody says, I wanna be homeless when I grow up, you know? Nobody, in their family, you know, there's a sense of, like, I really, if they tell you I'm trying hard, if a kid comes to you, or a student comes to you, and says, you know, I tried my best, the response should be, help me understand what that means to you. Show me what you did. And then if they say, you know what? I can't even, 
I, I have you know a reading disability and I can't read those word problems. Then you provide the resource list. Remember that idea of what is it that you can do? It is very rare for a student to say, you know what, I came to your class every single day because I didn't care. You know? If you think about it that way, I mean, you know, it, it makes no sense, right? So there's, and I know that we are not here to put blame on anybody. We're here to improve our practice, okay? So, so think about that in terms of um, did they not have access, you know? Catch the students early on. You know, if they fail that first test, the chances of them passing your class are very small, you know? What can you do to intervene? You know, and what are you doing in terms of providing opportunities to say, you know what? You're going to take a little longer, and I'll give you a really good example for me. So, um, OCAM. OCAM, that was me. That was my course. So I enrolled. And the, the professor, he just went a thousand miles an hour. And it was that orange book, I don't know if you remember that one. <laughs> March. Oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> I was afraid, you know, and it was one of those like, I remember he used to give us like 70 problems at a time, and it was just, I got to a point where I'm like, I've never failed a class in my life, this is not going to be the first. But then I went to him and I said, look, this is what's happening, I don't get it. You know, and, and, and I actually avoided Okim till my last semester in college. You know what that meant? <laughs> All stakes. I had to walk. High stakes. I had to walk with a W in Okim, and then I had to take it in the summer, right? Can you imagine when it came to being my first in my family, first supposedly to earn a biology degree, and feeling that sense of fake? Like, this is not really a degree I earned, right? So, but, here's where it made a difference. Okay, so if a student, early on, you're like, fail, you know? Was it access? No. A book access, it wasn't, right? Was it access to information? Yes. His lecture style, that was it. He just lectured straight through and walked. I never actually had the opportunity to actually, you know, even sit with my neighbor and say, help me understand what he just did. Why is there an arrow there and not over there, you know? There was no space. And I, I really felt like, what do I do? I didn't want to show that close to graduation, I didn't want to show my deficiency in OCAM, right? Um, so what did I do? I went to the professor and I said, I've never had to do this in my life, but this is what's happening and this is my game plan. So I said, I need you to withdraw, to drop me from the class if that's okay. You know, I'm not gonna quit. I said, I'm gonna, I already talked to the summer school professor and I said, I'm gonna start now so I can have a little more time figuring out. Because ultimately, he was like, you know, the reality is, I want you to walk away with the essential ideas of, of OCAN. If it takes you a year to get it, that's on you. But I'm not going to fail you just because you didn't get it either, you know? So for me, that was differentiation in how I was able to express that. And both professors said, we know you're going to take longer, so you're going to start. And he started assigning me homework <coughs> from, so I could be ready for summer school. And I passed with a B, which is like, awesome. yeah, yeah, you know? I mean, it, that, to me, it's not, remember those boxes that we saw and the little kids standing on them? This is where we have to think. And it's not providing preferential treatment, if you see it that way. I work just as hard. You know, but it took me a year to get it for, for that one semester of course, you know. That's okay. You know, and it was I worked and every word problem every word said, you know, and it was such a different way to access the information. His style was so different. He was a storyteller. And a story to, and I was like, Oh, I see it. I see the meaning now, you know. That, so this idea in terms of how we allow students to express what they know tends to be a very typical Take this test, too bad if you didn't do well in it, you know? So we need to kind of think about what could we do for that, the students that have the little itty bitty box, right, that can't quite get over. And I have to, I have to get you to think away from, they're working, you're making them work, it's going to look different, okay? So what does this center have to do with it, you know? Ultimately, is it you know a banner, badge of honor that you want to walk away saying, yeah, you know, seventy percent of my uh, students fail my course? Is that some? Is that what you teach? Right? 
I think we teach because we want students to get it. We want them to walk away with a passion for the content, but at the same time to understand why it matters for the bigger world, for, our, for their lives. Why it matters for you, for them to know. Right? And right now in Congress, we have, what, 17 lawmakers, I think, out of what? More than 500, 400? That have a science background. And that's when we get the decisions that are made. There's a direct, very, very real consequence to our students not um, finishing STEM careers. Okay, assessment. Like I said, straight, your typical assessment that you walk away, you're gonna have the grade sometime before 5 p.m. today, is probably, <laughs> you're gonna rethink this, I hope, you know? Because ultimately, why do you wait till the very end to know if they got it? You should be splitting some of these things during different checkpoints. Each of these faucets should have assessments built along the way. Make it easier on yourself by focusing your assessment to say, am I, am I looking at this concept and how students make relationships, or am I just quizzing them in their vocabulary? And if it's a vocabulary quiz, why are you grading it? You know, think about that. Think about how you spend your time, think about how much you get paid, and divide and do the math and how much it costs to grade those papers. Maybe that's not the way. That's something to think about, right? Um, but is their final assessment, could it be some type of performance expectation? Did they show you what they know? How? Something to think about, right? Okay. Any questions on this? I know it's a lot, but that's why this is the only slide for this, <laughs> for this time. So what I want you to do now is to ground your thinking into what you already do um, and think about what are some of the boxes that you're missing right now and then make sure you're intentional in, in filling them out. And you know, if you want, you're gonna have a copy of this to access whenever you need it, you know, to print out more. Um, so even if you pick this one in the middle of the semester or if you pick this one right before your finals or this one at the very introduction, think about what are all the different components for you to think about. And you can actually see, am I, Covering one concept too long or too much. That's something to think about too. Right? Okay, so that's it. I will let you loose and you're going to continue working and then we're going to have lunch after that. Yep. I will roam around and kind of see where you're at and then once you're done with this, we can definitely break after that. Sure, lunch okay. should be here in about 15 minutes. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>